Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. I'm going to play this video and talk about things that are going on. I better explain what's going on and talk about things that I think that are being done right and or done wrong. So this is a few months old and I know it's made its rounds on the other normal OIS uh, channels or places where you see OIS videos. Um, but it is one of those videos where I think there's some good talking points in it. So uh, I'll play this and then I'll go back and hit those talking points. How many guns does he own? That's a rifle? A real rifle or air rifle? What are we talking about? He, I guess, hunts rabbits with it, but you can't verify if it's like an actual rifle or Are the guns in the bedroom? So the last place she saw him was in the master bedroom? Thirty two three thirty seven shots fired, shots fired, shots fired. Code cover. <laughs> Let me see your hands! Hey! Shots fired! Muevas el rifle! Roll away from the gun, let us help you! Muevas el rifle! Roll away from the gun! Si puede, come on! You gotta get away from the gun so we can help you, bud! Come on! Muevas el rifle! No se mueva, señor! No se mueva! No se mueva! Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, just a quick, quick check back at the beginning. So this is a call about a person threatening to hurt their self. I wish that they could have provided the 911 call. Um, we have a little bit more information to go off of. Um, so it's possible that during the 911 call, you know, she could have mentioned the, the guns and the stuff. Um, I would say that that's most likely what has occurred because this, uh, this officer or this deputy whose camera that we're looking through right now, he brought a rifle and he did the correct thing. He brought a rifle to a high risk scenario that could have turned into a gunfight. Trying to find the right freeze frame to get it on. Probably the best I'm gonna get until he actually shoots the thing. Actually, let's get a freeze frame of the rifle coming up. Yeah, we'll just use it as a freeze frame. Um, so, I would suspect, like I said, that during the 911 call, she mentioned guns. And so, this officer, I think, acted on that information and did the right thing. He got a rifle out. They're in a rural area. And that can involve long distances between you and a potential threat. And the best thing to have for long distances is a rifle. Even if it's not long distances, it'll say it's, it's still an urban environment. The best thing still to bring to something like this is a rifle. Because you have no idea what's going to happen. Just because the person says they want to harm themselves doesn't mean they'll contain it to just, to just harming them. They could harm other people. So the best thing to bring is a rifle. It's a high risk call. High risk calls dictate that rifles come out. If this officer did not have a rifle, and had pistol only, could he have made that same shot? Mm, possibly, but it's also not possible as well. Luckily, I think that they had mentioned in here that the weapon was unloaded, which there's no way of knowing that beforehand. Um, but if this deputy had a pistol and he, he fired at this guy, and this guy did have a loaded gun, he could have missed that guy. And that guy having a rifle with a scope on it could have aimed at that deputy and got a shot off on that deputy and made a, a direct hit before that deputy could. So rifles are absolutely necessary and needed for high-risk calls like this. Weapon-mounted lights. Fighting rifles, all fighting guns need to have weapon-mounted lights, and those weapon-mounted lights need to have high candela, high lumen. They need to be able to have a lot of brightness reaching as far as you can get it to go. <clears throat> Particularly with rifles, since you're going to be able to make hits at a longer distance with a rifle. Um, Surefire has come out with their turbo uh, line. So basically, if you got a Surefire X300, 
you can get that in turbo now and it's got better candela on it it's got a little bit further reach tighter hotter beam on it same with her scout one brand of lights that uh, is pretty popular and I admittedly like it a little bit better than than my my sure firelight um, is mod light so mod light has some some pretty pretty bright lights uh, on the market there's another one uh, oh cloud defensive I think it's called cloud defensive um, they've got they got a pretty bright light but I think between the two I think mod lights probably a little bit more popular um, I got a mod light and it it's it just it's got some throw on it like it's it's bright and it will reach out there um, and the one I have isn't even the the most brightest one you can get um, there's another model that that's a brighter and has a tighter beam on it and reaches out a lot further and when it comes to being able to positively identify the threat and confirm that they are a threat actually that means the difference between you walking around a free person or being confined to a concrete cage for the rest of your life white light is one thing night vision is a another now in this particular incident would it be necessary for the officer to whip out some night vision not necessarily I think going at this with just white light is good but the environment um, and their location so let's bring up that map again boom they're in a they have a very rural area right so sheriff's offices uh, can go out to some very remote areas and because they can go out to some very remote areas the use of night vision and night vision related equipment I think is of utmost importance I think that um, sheriff's offices should be trying to equip their deputies with night vision and night vision related equipment so let's say for example this guy did something else and um, he harmed his wife and he went out out in this open area or whatever and was armed being out in this area and, and trying, trying to search, to search with, with white light, light is actually, actually not good. good. It's, it's actually, actually a disadvantage to you at that point. point. Um, when, when it comes, comes to fighting, fighting at night and, and using flashlights or weapon mounted lights, lights, when, when you, you turn, turn that light on, you are broadcasting exactly where you are. If before you turned on that light there was any doubt about where you are, you eliminate that doubt the instant you click that light on. It's like a bright neon sign clicking on saying, here I am, here I am, how do you do? <laughs> yeah, watch too much, Miss Rachel. Um, and not only does it broadcast where you are, It shows to the people observing you what you can see and what you cannot see. They can see where your light is pointed at. They know the light's not on them. They know they're not visible at this point, and they can use that to their advantage because they know what you see and what you can't see, and they know exactly where you are as they are hiding in the darkness. So how do you turn that around? night vision so if you got nods click those down and you can see that entire environment similar to if it was kind of twilight hours maybe it's not like full daytime but you can see quite a bit with night vision and then if you have an infrared laser or illuminator on your rifle you can turn those on and only people with night vision can see that light you cannot see it with your naked eye you've got an illuminator on which is basically like a big powerful flashlight you can search with that illuminator it's like a, a freaking spotlight and then when you see something of interest you see the person you can click on that laser 
or you can turn on the, the spotlight and the laser at the same time. You can put that laser dot right square on their chest and they have no idea whatsoever that they've got a rifle pointed at them and that is aimed at their chest. They have no clue. Unfortunately, night vision and night vision related equipment is not cheap. So some agencies have trouble funding for that and individual officers have trouble funding that. If, <laughs> if it is a, a hard thing to sell to get officers to get a freaking tourniquet on their own when they're only like $32 or less, if an officer ain't buying that shit, um, damn well they're not buying night vision. So that's the only negative thing about night vision and related equipment is it's not cheap. It's, it's kind of expensive, but it gives you an amazing superpower to see in the dark. Like how ninja is that? <laughs> see in the dark like a cat and you can shoot at people and they don't even know that you're aiming at them. Not much else to really talk about this video. If you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more Monday quarterback videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching.